Welcome everyone to Polson Park uh, Church That Loves. I came across this verse this week, Exodus 23, 25. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. What a promise for the days that we are living in right now. God has created us to be worshipers. But also God has given us a free will to worship what we will. Where do you spend your time, talents, and money? The answer to that question is more than likely different now than it was prior to COVID-19. I know myself, I spent a lot of time in front of the TV watching the Toronto Raptors. Would the Raptors repeat as NBA champions? I may never know. Was I worshiping the TV? Everyone is having time these days to reflect on deeper questions of life. Maybe this is one of the questions that have come to your mind. Who or what do I worship, adore, or focus on the most? My spouse? Family? Work? Am I being consumed by COVID-19? Or is God the center of my life? John 4.23 says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the great and mighty one. As we join together, although not in one place, but corporately over the airwaves, we pray that our worship this morning will be truly spirit-filled worship that you seek. We are grateful for your love for each one of us. Be with us now, in Jesus' name, amen.
morning, Polson family and friends. Thank you for joining us today for our virtual worship. Today I begin a new series entitled Power to Change. And over the next four weeks, this week and the next three, we're going to be looking at the power to change our, our thoughts, the power to change our attitudes, the power to change our actions, and ultimately the power to change our destiny. So today I'd like to start with the power to change our thoughts. Have you ever found yourself in a place where you feel like you're drowning in an ocean of negative thoughts? A place where it's easy to judge and criticize yourself or others? A place where your thoughts seem dark and scary? Or a place where fear or lust or any number of other undesirable thoughts seem to be dominant? Today I want to tell you, you have power to change your thoughts. And I want to be careful here. I don't want to sound like an infomercial and, and I don't want to 
come on the side of the plethora of other power of positive thinking and mind over matter gurus. Please, please don't let your mind go there when you think about this sermon. Instead, I want to tell us how today we have the power to experience a renewed mind through the Holy Spirit and the difference that'll make. So first, let's take a look at some of the characteristics of an unrenewed mind. And to do that, I'd like to read from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 18 to 32. Romans, chapter 1, verses 18 to 32. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be made known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood for what has been made so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relationships for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relationships with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they they do what ought not to be done. They become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing, doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity. No love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Let me take a few moments to talk about the mind without Christ, or or what we would call the non-renewed mind. First, Paul tells us in Romans 1 that the non-renewed mind suppresses the truth. It neither glorifies God nor thanks him. The non-renewed mind's thinking is futile. It's pointless. It has no definite direction to lead towards betterment. It exchanges truth about God for lies, and it worships things instead of God. As a matter of fact, the The non-renewed mind actually doesn't think it's even worthwhile to retain knowledge of God. They discard it. They, They don't even have any belief in God. Paul says that it is a depraved mind. A depraved mind that does what ought not to be done. And it not only does what ought not to be done, but it even gives a stamp of approval on others who do those things. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, that the God of this age has blinded the mind of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. In Romans 8, he he gives a comparative between the mind of the flesh, the non-renewed mind, and that of those living in the spirit. He says that those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what that on what the flesh desires. Let's just back up for a minute. Let's go back to Romans chapter 1, the latter part of Romans chapter 1, because Paul describes some of what that looks like. They have become filled with wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. 
Their minds are full of envy and murder, strife, deceit, and malice, gossip, slander. They're God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, and no mercy. That's some of the characteristics of the non-renewed mind. But Paul says, but those who live in accordance to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. And what does the Spirit desire? The Spirit desires to reveal God and His truth. The Spirit desires to bring glory to God. The Spirit desires to produce His fruit in you. And I believe that as you read what the fruit is, it's what he desires to produce in our mind. Listen to it from Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you see the contrast? Do you see the contrast between the mind that is non-renewed and the mind that is transformed by the Holy Spirit. Paul goes on to say in Romans 8 that the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The old way of thinking, the non-renewed mind, sucks the life out of us. It kills us. It, it brings us to that place and leads us to destruction. But the mind governed and controlled and renewed by the Holy Spirit brings life and peace. So let me ask you today how you think about four key areas of your life. What do you think about God? What do you think about yourself? What do you think about others? And what do you think about life situations? Where do your default thoughts usually take you? For instance, when you think about God, do you see his goodness and his love and his grace or not? Does your mind even take you to thinking about God and his goodness? Or does your mind take you to thinking negative things about God or, or thinking judgmental and critical things about God? Is he central in your thoughts or an occasional passing thought? And where does your mind take you when you think about yourself? Do you think about who you are in Christ do you think about the gifts, the graces, the love? Or do you see yourself in a more limited or critical way? This is one of those areas where I needed to experience renewal of my mind. A number of years ago, I was at a retreat, and, and part of that retreat, we, we did uh, some evaluations. And I was reading through the evaluations, and there was one part in this one evaluation where I didn't quite understand what it meant. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go talk to one of the advisors. And so I, I went and I showed it to the advisor and I said to him, I said, can you help me with this? Because I really don't understand what it's saying. <clears throat> Looked me square in the eye, said, well, it's saying one of two things. I said, oh, what's that? He said, you're either self-deprecating or you're denying the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Wow. Neither of those really sat with me. I said, uh, is there an option three? No, there wasn't. So I went back to my room that, that afternoon, really feeling the heaviness of, the, of those words on me. And I spent the next number of hours asking the Lord, asking the Lord to reveal to me the lies that, that were binding me. What were the things about myself that I was judging and condemning myself for? 
Was I really denying the work of the Holy Spirit in my life? Was I minimizing who he was and what he did? And that afternoon into that evening, God was able to reveal. He was able to free. He was able to give me a fuller understanding of my identity in Christ, fuller than I'd ever imagined. Man, I can't tell you the difference that made in my life. When all of a sudden my thoughts were not self-condemning, self-judging, self-belittling, to now I was free to be who God wanted me to be. How do you see yourself? And what about others? Do you think about what's good and praiseworthy in them, or or are you quick to note shortfalls and criticize and judge? What about life situations? Do you think about how God is at work and in control? Or do you allow your thoughts to be filled with what's negative, fear, worry, or even a what's-the-use mindset? Paul says in Colossians 3, 1 to 3, he says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And then he says, Set your minds on heavenly things, on things above not on earthly things. Why? For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Friends, we have the power to experience a renewed mind through the work of the Holy Spirit and it will make a difference. So how does this renewing of our minds happen? Let me give to you a few thoughts. First, I believe it starts with prayer. It starts with prayer in which we acknowledge and confess those those things in our life that we already know are negative or destructive, whether it's our views of God, views of ourselves, views of others, views of life situations. Those things that, as we think about it, they become heavy, they become dark, they become weighty. Those things that push us down and suppress us. Those things that steal away our joy. Those thought patterns that do not allow us to experience the fullness of God. We acknowledge those and we confess those. And then we release them and we surrender them to God. We say, God, I just, I give these to you. I surrender the way I view you. I surrender the way I'm viewing my spouse. I sur- Whatever it is, we surrender that. And then we invite him to take those things. Lord, I invite you to take these thoughts. And you, you can name the thought. I invite you to take away the thoughts, the negative thoughts I have about my spouse. I invite you to take away the negative thoughts I have about this person or this situation. And then we in- receive from him. And here's where I I usually shift into what I call the show me prayers. And I start out by saying, God, show me the lies. Show me the half truths. Show me those falsehoods that are permeating my thoughts, that are guiding my thoughts. And then the second thing I say is this. Oh, by the way, when he shows you those things, go back and acknowledge and confess release and surrender, invite him to take it and and receive from him. And then the second thing I, I ask him to show me is show me how to renew my mind. I've realized that unless he shows me this, I really am not sure how to do it. And so here's some things that help with that. Second thing, first one, start with prayer. Second one is read the word. We read the word to discover truth about God, ourselves, others, and life situations. Many times we have established our thought patterns based upon non-truth or half-truth or lies. And so by, by reading the word, it gives to us new truth to allow us to build a new foundation for our thought life. And then we don't just read the word. The third thing we do is we meditate on that word because meditating on the word allows God's truth to become more central in our thoughts. It allows the truth that he's given to us to go down deeper, to take some roots, to help us 
to be more solidified in that truth. The fourth thing I do is I audibly proclaim God's truth. Here's what I've discovered. Speaking truth shines God's light and power into the active darkness of my thoughts. For instance, perhaps I'm struggling with uh, my relationship with my spouse. I'm not at this moment. I want you to know that. But perhaps I have thought about over the years, there's been times where perhaps I've thought negative things about my spouse. And I've allowed those negative things to become the central record playing in my mind. And so it starts out usually this way. It starts out as a very small, insignificant thing. And I allow it to grow and grow and grow in my head. Marcy has never done another thing. But what I've done is I've allowed my mind to take that one insignificant thing and build it so it becomes something huge. Sometimes what we need to do, many times what we need to do, is audibly proclaim the truth into that situation. So, for instance, there was one time where I had to say, God, your truth says that I should keep no record of wrongs. So, Lord Jesus, I release this wrong so that it is no longer a record. I release it to you and leave it for you because this is not love. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Therefore, I release it to you. Do you see how that works? You take a biblical truth and you speak into the situation, into the thought pattern that's there, and we release it to God. We shine light on it to dispel the darkness. We start with prayer, we read the word, we meditate on the word, we audibly audibly proclaim God's word, And then the fifth thing I would say is this. Invite the Holy Spirit to focus your mind and your thoughts on God, on his truth, and on those things which bring transformation. This sometimes can be a battle because it's real easy to fall back into the old pattern. It's real easy to let the old thoughts come back and to dominate and to control. And so we ask the Holy Spirit to take control of those thoughts and to replace those old thoughts with the new thoughts so that we can live in the reality of our mind being transformed and renewed on God, his truth, and the reality. And then after we've done this, there's one other thing I think is important. I think it is important for us to set a new thought practice and criteria. And one of the thought, practice, and criteria that I would encourage you to establish in your life is what Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 8 tell you. Here's what it says. Do not be anxious. Do not be anxious. I would say, do not be concerned. Do not be bothered. Do not be upset. Do not be consumed. Do not be controlled. Do not be obsessed. Do not be depressed. You put in whatever word you want to in there. Do not be anxious or any of these things about anything. Hmm. So I shouldn't be bothered. I should. What do I do? Paul says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, no matter where you find yourself, no matter where you find your thoughts. By prayer, petition, with thanksgiving. They go together. See, it's real easy for us to pray and and to put petitions, say, oh God, change them, change them, change them. But what happens is that our prayers can still be focusing on the negative instead of focusing on the positive. When we add that thanksgiving component, it's about thanking God for who he is and what he's doing. Thanking God for who I am and what he's doing in my life. Thanking God for who that other person is and what he's doing there. Thanking God for the situation in life that I find myself in and how he's at work, even when I may not see it at this moment. He's at work to draw me closer and to help me to lean on him and to trust him. So don't be anxious, concerned, bothered, or whatever by anything, but in every situation by prayer and thanks. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, what are we supposed to do? Present your request to God. Lay it at his feet. Whatever that is that's floating in your brain, lay it at his feet. Put it down there, friends. You don't need to carry it. 
You don't need to have the weight. You don't need to continue to be wrestling in your own mind when God wants to give you freedom. Present your request to God. And what's it say happens? It says, and the peace of God. Brothers and sisters, when our minds are filled with all these anxious thoughts, all these thoughts that are all over the map, these dark and scary thoughts, these self-condemning thoughts, when our minds are filled with that, the peace of God is not there. Our minds are in turmoil. It says but when we give these things to God, the peace of God which transcends all understanding, what will it do? Guard your heart and guard your mind in Christ Jesus. That is the secret of the path of renewal. Our hearts and our minds are guarded in Christ Jesus by the indwelling power and presence of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul goes on in the next verse and he says, finally, kind of wrapping things up. As you've done that, once you've done that, here's what you do. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think upon these things. And I think about this today, I just think about how Paul says to us in in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For though we live in the world, we don't wage war as the world does. No, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. I think one of the greatest strongholds we have for most of us in our lives is these thought patterns that are self-defeating, self-condemning, and drawing us deeper and deeper into darkness. God, by his divine power, wants to demolish those strongholds. And he says, we demolish arguments, And every pretension, every falsehood that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and the truth of God. And here's what he says we do. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. There's a battle. But we don't fight as the world fights. We fight with the power of God through the Holy Spirit. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Remember, we have the power to experience a renewed mind through the work of the Holy Spirit. And it will make a difference. Pray with me. So God, we just want to thank you for the promises of your word, which says that you will transform us by renewing our mind. Thank you for the truth of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And now I pray in the name of Jesus and by the authority of Jesus' name that you will teach us. You will teach us how to live in the truth that we have heard, the truth that we can have our thoughts changed by the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, would you take us deep today and each day with you? Would you transform us and renew our minds so that we may see the truth of who God is, who we are, who others are, and the reality of our life circumstances in a way that brings glory and thanksgiving to you? In Jesus' name, amen.